Welcome back to Discrete Mathematics 2. Today we're going to take a look at vertex degree and some other very closely related theorems. So, what is a degree? Well, every vertex has a degree, which we abbreviate as deg with our vertex as its argument. And that's the number of edges in the graph that are incident to that vertex. So, for instance, I have a nice small graph here. It's got three vertices and three edges. So we take a look at what is the degree of A. Well here's A, here's a vertex A, and it has one edge incident to it. So the degree of A is 1. But what about B? Well B has the, the edge going to A, that's incident, and it has an edge going to C. So the degree of B is 2. So what about C? Okay, well we see that C has an edge going to B, so that's one. But what do we do when it loops? Okay, well when it loops, we have C leaving and C entering again. So we have two points that it goes through. So if we take a look at, let's say this pair is CC, so this is what the edge looks like in our edge set, then its degree gets one for the start point and one for the end point. So if this were directed for instance, then you'd say, okay, well the tail gets one and the head gets one. But in this case, we just say that each side gets one. So the degree of C is actually three because it has one going from C to B. So if we take a look at C to B here, then we count all the times where C is in an edge. So C is in, is in, is in an edge here here and here, so its degree is 3. If we take a look at the set of uh, the last edge from A to B, we see that B is in the set of edges twice, and A is in the set of edges once, so it corresponds to their degree. So, what do we know about total degrees? So here's the theorem. In an undirected graph all of the degrees sum up to two times the cardinality of the edge set. So two times as many edges is equal to the degree of V. So let's take a look at this. Well, I'm going to do a visual proof really quick. So here's the thing. If we take two points and we add an edge between two vertices, then the degree is going to be 1 for A and one for B, because we have one edge leaving A and we have one edge leaving B. So this one edge is going to add two to the degrees. Now if we have a loop, then it loops around and we get, so let's call this C, then we get one added to the degree when it leaves and one added to the degree when it comes back. So this loop will add two edges. And because the only thing we can do between two points with an edge, or either put them between two vertices or loop them, each time we add an edge, we're just going to add two degrees. So two times the number of edges is equal to the total degrees of the graph. So we can write this in words, we can say proof. Um, we start with, say, Let's, let's, let's just say we, we have a graph G. So here's a graph G, can be whatever we want, and then we're going to add an edge. Okay, so uh, this is going to be the inductive hypothesis. I guess what I should do is do a base case probably, because every inductive proof has, an, has a base case. So we're going to say when edges are equal to 0 or edges is equal to 1, we see that the degree is either going to be 0 or 2, depending on whether there's zero edges or one edge, which has been drawn visually over here. So for our graph G, we just, we're going to add an edge. So there's two cases that can happen when we add an edge. Case one, it's a loop. And if it's a loop, then we get this situation up here. So where we get plus two degrees. Um, you can write this out in words, say if it's a loop, then we leave the vertex, we come back to the vertex, so that's plus two degrees. Um, case two is going to be um, connecting 
let's say vi with vj so these are just two edges anywhere in the graph um, where i is not equal to j so this is just where it's not a loop then again you get plus two degrees so because the base case is even the inductive hypothesis keeps it even then it ends up that it's always going to be two times the amount of edges because you add one edge you get plus two degrees so kind of a very loose proof but I think when doing these proofs and videos it's probably better to just give you a visual image rather than a bunch of words because if you want the words you can look online on Wikipedia and you probably wouldn't be using this video then because you'd be able to understand it through text so that's what's going on so the sum of the degrees is going to be equal to two times the amount of edges okay so this makes sense you know it leaves it comes back okay it's all good so we need the notion of degrees to talk about regular graphs. So for a regular graph, specifically an n regular graph, an n regular graph requires that all of the degrees of each vertex is equal to n. So if we have a three regular graph, that means that every vertex, so all the vertexes, all, all the vertices, has to have a degree of three. So how do we draw this? Well, Here's the thing, if we have two nodes, then we can connect them, and that'll add one to each vertex. And then if we want to add two to a vertex, we just loop it. So our top point A here has one, two, three degree. Our B here has one, two, three degrees. So this is a three regular graph. So here's the trick to doing regular graphs. If you have a point here, a vertex, well it has degree 0. If you want to add 2 to it, you loop it. If you want to add 1 to it, then you create a new vertex and you connect them. And that'll add plus 1 to each node and the loop will add plus 2. So if you want a 5 regular graph, well what we can do in a five regular graph is we can just do two vertices again and we can connect both of them to add one and then we can loop each one twice and that'll give us a five regular graph. You could connect more vertices and do some crazy things but it's not necessary. So here's a question. Is it possible to have a five regular graph with ten edges? It's kind of an interesting question. But what do we know about how degree, because this five regular graph just means all the degrees are equal to five, and the total amount of edges is 10. So we know something that relates degrees with edges, and that is the fact that the sum of all the vertices, all the degrees of vertices, is equal to two times the amount of edges. So, what this means is that, well, it's a five regular graph. So that means that each degree is going to be five. So the degree is going to be five, but how many vertices do we have? Well, we don't know how many vertices we have, so this is going to be five times v. So this is going to be the cardinality of the vertex set. So this is how many vertices we're dealing with. And this is going to be equal to 2 times the number of edges, which is 2 times 10. So what this means here is that 5 times the amount of vertices is equal to 20. So the amount of vertices is equal to 4. So you can make a 5 regular graph with 4 vertices. OK, why don't we try to draw that? Let's figure out how to do this. So we want a five regular graph with four vertices. And it has to have exactly 10 edges, so this might actually be pretty difficult. Okay, let's loop each one so we can get two. So that's one, two, three, four edges. Whoop. Let's do four edges here. So that's four edges. And now they have degree two. So we can connect each vertex to another vertex. 
So now this top left vertex has degree 5. So that's 4 plus 3. Okay, now we'll connect this bottom one. That'll add 2, and then we'll connect these last two vertices. So now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 edges. And let's make sure all the degrees are right. So the top left has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's good. Bottom left has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So our theorem has shown us that this graph is possible. And then we drew it, and it was possible. Of course, it's not easy to draw these graphs all the time. I just happened to pick some really nice numbers so things didn't get a little bit too crazy when I'm trying to figure it out. But it's interesting. So that's an application of our little theorem here, that the degree sequence is equal to two times the amount of edges, and with regular graphs we can figure out what's possible. So now we should talk about hypercubes. Hypercubes are going to be talked about in the future. In fact, in the final I wrote for this course, um, there is a hypercube question. So, what is a hypercube? Well, it has to do with binary. So, let's start with Q0. Q0 is just going to be one vertex. And we're going to label it 0. So, should probably label it like, uh, like that. Let's do a different color so we know Okay, that's zero. Then what we do is with Q1, we double the amount of edges or the amount of vertices and then we connect them. So here we have our original vertex zero and we connect it with this other vertex which we're going to call one. So let's connect it. Q2, we follow the same strategy. So here's our old vertices, which we call 0 and 1. Then what we do is we duplicate it. So we're going to give it the same name too. So we're going to call this 0, 1. And now what we do is we connect the corresponding 0 to the 0 and the 1 to the 1. So we make a connection like this. The 0 goes to the 0, the 1 goes to the 1, and then on the original copy we add zeros in front of the string, and on the new copy we add 1s. So now we have the binary sequence for 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so Let's continue. Let's do Q3. So Q3, um, we're going to have this nice little copy here. So we're going to have to duplicate it. So I'm going to just draw the duplication here. And we have this connected. So this is going to be 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And then our new copy, which we'll do in green, is going to have the same labels, so 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And now we're going to connect the 1, 0 with the 1, 0, the 0, 0 with the 0, 0, 0, 1 with 0, 1, and 1, 1 with 1, 1. And now, for the old copy, we're going to put in some zeros in front of all of these terms. So now we get 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. And then for the new copy, we're going to put 1's in front. And now we have 1 through 8. So that's how we do hypercubes. Now we can keep extending them as much as we want. So these are interesting graphs and we're going to see an application of them pretty soon. But first, let's do a practice question. So before we figured out that the sum of all the vertices, specifically their degrees, is equal to two times the number of edges. Okay, so let's show that there must be an even number of odd degree vertices in any undirected graph. So, we need an even number of odd degree vertices. Okay, well let's assume that there's an odd number of odd degree vertices. Well, if we get that, then 
Okay. Let's take a look here. Then we get an odd number. So let's call this 2k plus 1. It's some odd number. And we multiply it by the amount of odd degree vertices, which is going to be 2k plus, sorry, 2j plus 1. So this is going to be the, um, the number of odd, and this is going to be the degree of odd, and then we add whatever's left. So if we have an odd degree of vertices, well, we might have an even or odd, it doesn't really matter, but we know that the remaining degrees should be even, because whatever it is, it's, so say we have 2L plus, or sorry, just 2L, so this will be the degree of the remaining. Because we have all the odd degrees here that we're taking account of, so that means that the rest of the degrees must be even, and odd times even, even times even, we're just going to get an even degree remaining. So this is going to be equal to some number 2 times m, which is the total. So we have a bunch of weird stuff going on here, but all we want to do is show that this is impossible. So what we get is, well, we can factor this out if we want. We can expand it. So we get 4kj plus 2k plus 2j plus 2l plus 1 is equal to 2m, and then we can factor out a 2 here, so we get 2kj plus k plus j plus l all plus 1 is equal to 2m, and we can see that, well, the number on the left is odd, and the number on the right is going to be even, so by contradiction, this can't be possible. We can't have an odd number of odd degrees. So this might seem a little weird because, well, intuitively, clearly if you have the sum of the degrees being two times the amount of edges, this sum has to be even and having an even number of odd degrees would make it odd. So, um, or sorry, having an odd number of odd degrees would make it odd, but it's just a nice formal number theoretical way of showing it. So a little bit more challenging. Let's give you the insight. Um, here, let's have three. We want an odd number of even, uh, an odd number of odd degrees. So we're going to have this. Let's, let's connect this here. Um, so now this top one's odd. So this has an odd degree and this has an odd degree. So here's the problem because now we have an even amount of odd degrees. So, okay, let's add another edge here. Okay, so now this right here is odd, but this now is even, so we still have an even amount of odd degrees. Okay, well if we loop it, it's not going to change it, so let's just add an edge here. Okay, so now we, now we have an even amount of edges up top, an even amount of edges in the bottom. So as you can see, it's impossible to construct a graph that has an odd number of odd vertices. Because when you connect two edges, or if you connect two vertices with an edge, it adds one to both degrees. So when you add one to both degrees, it's like adding two. And if you loop it, you still add two degrees. So every single time you add an edge, you add two to the total. So that means that either one edge is going from even to even, or two edges are going from even to odd or odd to even. So clearly both, or you can't have an odd number of odd degrees. So that was vertex degree. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. If not, then uh, feel free to share it with your friends because they might find this useful. So have a great day. Check out trevtutor.com for some more information, and uh, that is it for Vertex Degree.